Hello and welcome back to the channel. Whilst I wait some parts for the Pi PF8 build, I got looking into some of the police and fire department radios that superseded the Pi radios and I came across the Burnett BE470. These radios were issued to the UK police and fire departments in the 1980s and came in as a direct replacement for the Pi sets which were being phased out at the time. The basic radio as it was supplied to the police and fire brigade came with a channel selector switch with up to three channels available in the UHF band and a top mounted P PTT button with a speaker and a microphone and a side mounted squelch defeat button. The unit could be tuned to the FM band across 420 to 470 MHz and could operate in single or two frequency simplex mode. It was powered via 200 mAh NICAD batteries that were special but very similar in size to a PP3 battery. It had a standby time of 8 hours and an RF output power of 500 milliwatts. The units that I have are a bit of a mix I think. There was a version of this radio that was issued to the fire department that had a protruding lever on the side as mine has to enable firemen and women to operate the radio with gloves on. However those same radios were also intrinsically safe radios and mine doesn't appear to be. The radios do have the fire department badges on so they might be fire department radios or a mix of the two. Either way they are representative of the radios as they were then so I'm not that worried. These sets also came with the harnesses as well. This would have been worn over the tunic of the firefighter or the police officer at the time. How the radio with its polycarbonate outer casing would have dealt with the heat generated in a real fire situation I'm not sure but overall this radio is very rugged even by today's standards. One of my subscribers mentioned that they would like to model the BE470 in 3D, so whilst I await a few bits for the Pi PF8, I thought as this unit looks easier to model and I have a little bit more skill with the modelling software, I thought I'd give it a go. So I removed the case screws and uh, continue to take the thing apart. Now you'll see there's um, a screw in the back there, two screws in the three screws in the top on both sides and uh, just gentle sort of prying of the top reveals the top section it's a modular uh, design this you can see the pins that connect the top half of the radio where the speaker microphone is and the PTT button to the rest of the radio it also obviously connects the RF signal to the antenna there as well I thought that's quite an unusual design I've not actually seen that before and you can see the reciprocal side of that which is the part of the radio built in with the sockets there for the pins uh, one would assume they're possibly gold connectors on there and the ruggedized um, channel selection like I say half of this I think is a fire radio and the other half might be a police version of this radio I'm not too sure but the the, the other half the, pulls out of the, of the case like that and you can see all of the control electronics here on the board now I believe these radios actually did come out in the late 70s but became standard police issue uh, and fire issue radios in the 1980s the socket holes there are aligned for the uh, crystals um, the, these radios are actually functioning radios so that is something that's going to be on the horizon a little bit down the line I should get some crystals for these and get them actually tuned up and get them working and you can see the, the double contacts there for the twin battery packs, high capacity uh, batteries of that size uh, obviously weren't available back then in the 1980s whereas nowadays of course uh, a lithium battery would power this radio for a very long time indeed. Um, there you can see the separate components of it and the polycarbonate shell here um, quite a thick case actually two and a half millimeters thick with a aluminium battery tray in the bottom there for accepting uh, both of the uh, official government they were government branded NICADs these were with a little seal on the side of them um, but uh, I think if I'm operating these I shall probably upgrade them to a lithium cells anyway so there's the basic components of the radio so I started modeling this in the 3D software starting uh, with the very basic battery plate uh, which is aluminium I shall, I shall print this out of some grey plastic just for fun for a start I then shaped uh, modeled the case uh, the case is a slightly unusual shape it's sort of fatter at the top than it is at the bottom and tapers to the side slightly but I think I've got it pretty close on this and then the head I uh, I got fairly close I imported a picture of sideways on to get the proper shape of the head there and um, I've got the head pretty 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 accurate to the original one I think and uh, just dropping in the uh, PTT button and the little charging receptacle bits on the top there that's what those two little metal nodes are for I believe um, and uh, yeah it was fairly easy to um, to model in 3D that and uh, it didn't take too long and the final um, 
one was to just put a belt clip on the back of it there like I say not an exact replica of the radio but pretty close and uh, I'll be filling this empty case I've got to put the antenna on it as well and, and the little side pieces but I should be putting the innards of a, a Zastone V77 inside this radio as I am with the Pi PF8 and um, you know they really are they're very very rugged um, radio these the um, the brochures that I found online for them clearly show there were different variants and different models in the 400 range that came out all the way up to when they changed to the 600 uh, which is fundamentally a very different looking radio so there are various versions of these around with different specs and features and they were a standard radio and looking about online at um, some historical police uniform photographs you can see here them I think traffic wardens also used them as the radios as well but they were ubiquitous amongst the police and the fire brigade and they even managed to find the operating instructions there online so if you have enjoyed this uh, 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 video please leave a, a like and if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel like I say the Pi PF8 um, video is still ongoing but I just thought I would slip out this video in between and here we can see a, uh, a real life scenario here an easily distracted uh, police officer with the old lady and uh, obviously thanks to his uh, his BE470 manages to radio in the the offender and get him tracked by the local bobbies Okay, I'll leave it there. We'll catch you on the next one. Hopefully, uh, we'll have some progress on the PF8. And uh, if not, we'll have a little bit more progress on this uh, cracking radio, the B470. If you have been, thanks ever so much for watching. We'll see you next time.